this is Sherry Rogers, Center Point High School Special Education Teacher. I would like to give you some information about special education students and services in the regular classroom. You have students with disabilities in your classroom, now what? A special education teacher will provide information on classroom and testing modifications which are agreed upon by a team in, in the student's IEP meeting. They are based on the diagnosed evidence of their disability. If you need more in-depth information to prepare for specialized instruction, you're allowed to access the student's folder. You may also ask questions of, that we can help you prepare the modifications. You are legally responsible for providing modifications to meet the needs of the student. Attending an IEP meeting, especially with your most challenging students, is a great way to learn about serving students with disabilities and having input in the process. Under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, there are 13 categories under which a student is eligible to receive the protections and services. Autism, deaf blindness, deafness, hearing impairment, emotional disturbance, intellectual disability, multiple disabilities, orthopedic impairment, other health impairments, specific learning disability, speech or language impairment, traumatic brain injury, and visual impairment. In autism, autism is a developmental disability significantly affecting verbal and nonverbal communication and social interaction. It's generally evident before age three and it adversely, adversely affects a child's educational performance. Other characteristics often associated are engaging in repetitive activities, stereotyped movements, resistance to environmental change or a change in daily routines, and unusual responses to some sensory experiences. I've included two links to, for more information about autism. Deaf blindness. Deaf blindness does not necessarily mean complete losses uh, in hearing and vision. It may seem as if a person cannot hear or see at all, but the term actually describes a person who has some degree of loss in both vision and hearing. There is a link for more information. Deafness or hearing impairment. A hearing impairment that is so severe that a child is impaired in processing linguistic information through hearing with or without amplification. Students face several educational barriers which can make the following tasks difficult. Learning by lecture, participating in discussions, giving oral presentations, taking oral exams, note-taking, and watching educational films. We'll have suggestions on how to assist these students if, you, if we have a student with these needs. Emotional disturbance. These are always diagnosed by a medical or counseling professional. A condition exhibiting one or more of the following characteristics over a long period of time and to a marked degree that adversely affects a child's educational performance. An inability to learn that cannot be explained by intellectual, sensory, or health factors. An inability to build or maintain satisfactory interpersonal relationships with peers and teachers. Inappropriate types of behavior or feelings under normal circumstances. A general, pervasive mood of unhappiness or depression. A tendency to de develop physical symptoms or fears associated with personal or school problems. And there's a link uh, to an emotional disturbance webpage at the bottom here. Intellectual disabilities. Significantly sub-average general intellectual functioning. Existing concurrently with deficits in adaptive behavior. Manifested during the developmental period that adversely affects a child's educational performance. And here's a link to some more information. 
multiple disabilities. The combination of disabilities causes such severe educational needs that they cannot be accommodated in a special education program solely for only one of the impairments. And there's a video called, This is Tyler. And I'll ask you, do you have a Tyler in your room? And be sure and go back and watch the video. Orthopedic impairment. An orthopedic impairment is defined by the IDA, IDEA as a severe orthopedic impairment that adversely affects a child's educational performance. That's a common theme in all of these disability categories. It has to have an adverse effect on the child's educational performance. It could be a congenital anomaly, impairments caused by disease, impairments from other causes, or put directly, they involve physical disabilities which could affect the academic process. Other health impairment. I've included a few common ones that we, that we see in our students here locally. Uh, fetal alcohol syndrome is the first one. ADD with or without hyperactivity. Emotional impairment as well as PTSD. Remember, you often don't know what goes on in their mind and their world. Kindness, care, and understanding may be the attitude that they most need. In the general school population, 47.4% of our special ed students have specific learning disabilities. These can cause academic problems. They can be manifested in disorders of attention, poor motor abilities, psychological process deficits, and information processing problems, lack of cognitive strategies needed, oral language difficulties, reading, written language, mathematical disorders, and even social skills deficits. Students with specific learning disabilities have specific areas of challenges that are documented by our educational testing. It can occur in one or more areas and can be addressed by regular education teachers through differing degrees of modifications and or accommodations. There's a great link from Project Ideal Online about specific learning disabilities. A speech or language impairment includes receptive language and expressive language difficulties, which can mimic a specific learning disability in language at times. These impairments are diagnosed by a speech language pathologist and therapy may be appropriate. Classroom modifications are listed at the link below and the speech therapist who serves the students should give you some suggestions and any help if there are receptive or expressive language difficulties. Traumatic brain injury. An accident or trauma that includes a head injury, patients experience markedly different symptoms and recoveries uh, unique to each individual. Tra TBI is verified by medical records and there is a link to traumaticbraininjury.com. Visual impairments, an impairment in vision that, even with correction, adversely affects a child's educational performance. The term includes low vision, partial sight, and degrees of blindness. Sometimes we're asked what, what is the difference between IDEA and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. First of all, the purpose of the IDEA is to ensure that all children with disabilities have available to them a free and appropriate public education. Section 504 prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in any program receiving public funds. Who is protected? By far, more people are protected under Section 504. A qualified handicapped person is covered under Section 504. 
under IDEA, they must fall into one of the 13 categories of qualifying conditions. The procedural safeguards are very similar. The steps in which to document the disability. The responsibility for IDEA is the special education director and for Section 504, there is a Section 504 coordinator. The enforcement has two different agencies and on funding, we are funded partially for IDEA. There is no funding attached for Section 504. The goal of Universal Design for Learning is to use a variety of teaching methods to remove any barriers to learning and give all students equal opportunities to succeed. UDL doesn't specifically target one ability or disability. It's about building flexibility that can be adjusted for every student's strengths and needs. West Virginia has an outstanding checklist uh, at the PDF link below. There are two other links to cast.org and udlcenter.org. Here are some additional resources and links for information on regular ed for regular education teachers in serving students with disabilities in your classrooms. Thank you for watching and I'd be glad to answer any questions.